what did my BFF pick for me? What book am I going to be reading in this vlog? Hi, my name is Jeanette and I want to thank you for joining me on the channel Jane Reads. So once again, the BFF prompt came up when I played my August TBR. This time it was the passport um, when I did the Around the World game. So I am right now watching the video back that my BFF has edited and put in what book I'm going to read. So I'm going to find that out and I'm going to film as I find that out. But you will already have if you watched my August TBR video, you'll already know this because this vlog will be going up after that video. But I will still link that TBR video below. So now let's find out what book she's made me read. Well, guess what? Christine gets to pick a book for me again. Here is the <gasps> book that Christine has chosen. Oh, she's nice. <laughs> okay, well, nice and mean, but you know. We can handle that. So she picked book number three of the Hangers Horseman series. This is In Honor's Defense by Karen Whitmire. This is book three of the series. Now I do have book one on my August TBR. So really she's just adding one extra book, which is book two for me to read so that I can get to book three. So instead of having six books on my TBR, really, I've got seven books on my TBR, which I mean, she's being nice because I was really probably planning on reading this one anyways. So yeah, thank you, Christine. And I, this is a historical fiction. As I said, it is book three of the series. So maybe, maybe I will do a f full reading vlog of me reading the series. We'll see. So in this vlog, I plan on reading the Hangers Horseman series by Karen Whitmire. So this is a three book seri series and book one and book three ended up on my August TBR. So of course I'm gonna read book two. But it, tonight is Friday, August the 11th when I'm starting this and I am just getting ready to start the first book which is At Love's Command. So I will check in when I'm done that book and kind of how I feel. Now book number one is a reread for me and I remember really enjoying it the first time. But other than that, I don't really remember a lot about it because it was two, three, four, year, three years ago probably that I read it. But I'm also including in this vlog will be my husband's birthday. So it is August the 11th. My husband's 50th birthday will be on Wednesday, August the 16th. And so I am getting ready to prep his birthday present. So I'm going to show you a little bit of it and what I decided to do for his birthday. So we don't normally do big gifts for each other because we buy what we need. So we usually just try to do something special like our trips, things like that. But I mean, it's his 50th birthday. That's kind of a milestone. And I did a party for his 40th and he told me, please don't do a big thing. Okay, that's fine. So we are getting together with a couple friends going out for supper and I've decided for fun, I was going to put together a box of 50 items for his 50th birthday. Which, when I thought about it, I was like, oh, this will be fun to do. And I'm like, oh, wait, I have to wrap each one of those items. What was I thinking? And, uh, and I have to come up with 50 items. Now, when I was talking to my mom about it, she's like, you know, do a pair of socks. And one sock is one, this other pair is number two. And I'm like, I could do it that way. But I'm, and I also don't want to end up with a bunch of junk. So what I've done is I've collected a bunch of his favorite foods, things we buy over and over again. Um, just different product products for our trip that, you know, he'll use, different things like that, just kind of a random. And my husband is a collector of stuff he uses on a regular basis. <laughs> so, I mean, I have grabbed a, a pack of mints from his cabinet because he has a collection of them. I've grabbed a thing of um, shampoo, 
I think it was shampoo, from his cupboard because he has a collection of them. And then I was looking at his closet one day and he has some clothes in there still with the clothing tags on it. So the night before his birthday, because I don't want to do it too early, I'm going to grab those and wrap a couple of those items because when I, if I do it Tuesday night, like, because I haven't had the house to myself for a period of time, so I'm going to steal them, wrap them. But if I do it Tuesday, he's going to be getting work clothes for Wednesday, so he's not going to see those. He won't even notice. That's, that's, that's the plan. We'll see. <laughs> Can I get away with it? <laughs> because I would not personally buy him clothes without him because he always wants to try them on and choose and right. I've tried that in the past and it hasn't worked. After 20 years, I've learned my lesson. Let him buy his own clothes. So I have and he needed a bin for something. He doesn't know he needs a bin, but he needs a bin. So I've got the bin started. You can see I'm just going to move you down a little bit. So I've started collecting. So tonight, because he works tomorrow, and because our hours, he are very, very similar. Um, we get off work within half an hour of each other. So because of that, I don't get very much alone time or to be able to get something in the house without him knowing about it. But he does work tomorrow and I do not. So I need to figure out how many items do I have and then I'm going to decide which items I'm going to take out of his closet but I won't do it tomorrow because he might notice in too many days early and figure out my list and do I have 50 items or what items do I need to grab tomorrow while I have some hours while he's at work. So that is my plan tonight plus I'm going to start wrapping some of this I'm going to find something to watch on TV and then wrap because I need to do it. I need to get it done and trying to do it all in one night. No, thank you. No, thank you. So yeah, so like we have aquariums, right? So I bought him some of his water conditioner that he uses all the time, right? I just, he likes to work in outside. So I bought him some gloves, um, you know, just the normal toothbrush. Um, favorite salad dressing he loves this sweet onion um, as I said mints that he loves and then I just bought some fun stuff too right like he cleans the car all the time so I bought him a cleaning cloth um, got him a travel mug because we talked about we needing a new one so got one for him Right, some candy. I do have some cereal that I bought, but I could obviously I couldn't fit it in this box, so I will have a couple items outside this box. Um, what else did I get? Um, taco sauce, barbecue sauce, because it's kind of a running joke with us and our friends is that. He uses sauce on everything, right? And we have a stockpile of barbecue sauce and ketchup, which I have somewhere. I did buy him a bottle of ketchup. <laughs> right? So this was going to be his birthday present. And then I plan because my mom won't be able to come and his mom won't be able to come and stuff. So I plan on filming him opening it. So I will include some clips of that in there in this video hopefully we'll see so yeah so that's what I'm gonna work on right now and then as I said I will check in again once I get a little bit further into the book and my thoughts it is a beautiful day today we just got home from church it is a Sunday and Andrew is barbecuing lunch we are gonna have sausages and fried onions on a bun and yesterday we after Andrew got off work we met up with some friends and went mini golfing so I'll insert a couple clips here I didn't get a lot but then we didn't finish the 18 hole course because it started raining on hole number 16 we were just about done number 16 so then we kind of ran for cover and decided no nope, it's not letting up we're not finishing it so and now it's windy here and yeah so I'm going to sit out and read while he barbecues and then we're going to have lunch. I'm staying there. That guy's waiting 
for everybody yep. to go by. That's pretty neat. I like that. We're coming across. I know, but they're not doing nothing. This guy here, he's playing traffic cop. I'm not sure if they want to go or not. There's like hundreds of them. And there's mallards. Oh, that poor one's sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> That doesn't count because Andrew That's threw it in. Good. It is now Monday evening. My husband has gone to bed. And since I got home from work today, it's been a pretty productive afternoon, I want to say. Well, depends what your version of productive is, right? I cleaned my makeup brushes, so they're all going to be nice and clean for tomorrow morning. I made supper, which wasn't really that exciting. It was leftovers from yesterday. So, I mean, that was a simple make supper. <laughs> and I finished reading At Love's Command by Karen Whitmire. This is book one of the Hanger's Horseman series. And I need to get a physical copy. <laughs> so, we are in Texas, 1893. Here's a real color cover photo. <laughs> So we are in Texas in 1893 and we meet um, the Hanger's Horseman. Now the book opens with a prologue set in South Dakota. I want to say 1892 maybe? 91? Something. A year or so ahead of where the book opens. And so we are entering a battle scene basically and as the battle scene's going i'm like i am so confused on what's going on there in he is a captain in the army Matt, matthew who is the leader of the hangers horseman is a captain in the army and they're battling and he it's a horrific battle that happens and then we move into chapter one the opening scene which takes us to texas 1893 they are no, the four of them are no longer military men and they have created the hangers horsemen group with Matthew being the leader. And basically they go after outlaws or those that are breaking the law that lawmen cannot deal with or aren't able to deal with. And so they go after them. So the opening scene is they are trying to stop a group of rustlers who is capturing animals from local farmers. And during that, one of the four of them gets injured. And so Matthew takes them to the local doctor and gets told that Dr. Joe will help you. And he shows up at the doctor and calls for Dr. Joe. Dr. Joe shows up and it's a female. It's Josephine. And Matthew's like, oh. But that he didn't, like, that didn't stop him. He showed her the respect that a doctor deserves and helps her and blah, blah, blah. And Dr. Josephine, otherwise known in the community as Dr. Joe, has become really fought for her position in the community and the respect because she is a woman in a man's profession. And a lot of when she first arrived in town, men were like, no, like, I can't have a woman doctor. This is just wrong. And she's really kind of fought and earned the respect that she deserves. 
And Matthew immediately gives her that respect once he gets over his initial shock that Doctor is a woman, which I really, really liked. You see the determination and the commitment that Matthew has to his men as he sticks by the guy's side that's injured and fights for him and kind of like, no, I'm going, he's going to get through this. And I really like the way the four horsemen work together. And then I really liked how Joe really fought for herself and she was stubborn and determined and just didn't let anybody put her down. I really like that. And so she was able to hold her own against these four men. Not that they were trying to put her down, right? But they really were working together. So then when she receives a letter of something that's happening with her family, she seeks them out for help. And her case doesn't really um, fit the criteria that their normal cases do. And she doesn't, she's not able to pay them the way they normally expect to get paid. And will they help her? After much consideration, they do help her. And it leads to a lot more happening. So this book is filled with action, romance, friendship, and faith. There is one of the four horsemen. His nickname is Preach. And at the beginning of each mission, Matt turns to him and says, do you have a scripture for us? And so he provides a scripture verse as they head into the mission. And I really like that. And the horseman's motto is to stop the, the bad guys, like the outlaws, the, those breaking the laws, but not to fatally injure. So basically they will shoot the knee or the shoulder or something to stop them, but they will avoid killing at all costs as much as they can. I mean, if they have to, they have to, but... Yeah, like I really, I really enjoyed that because we are talking like the old west in the early, late 1800s, early 1900s, and guns are very prevalent, and just I really like that, and I really like the way the four of them kind of talk things out and worked together and kind of it just the strength of their bond between the four of them, and one did not move on its own without the kind of getting okay from everybody else. And I, I really like that. So I gave this book four stars because I really enjoyed the story. It was just, there was a couple incidents at times that I was a little confused exactly what was going on and trying to keep some of the characters straight in my mind because there's a lot of bad guys and then there's the four of them plus Joe and then her family. And it just trying to like, okay, which one is this one? But one of the quotes I took from it is, you cannot undo the past, but you can learn from it. And throughout this, there's one scene in particular, or like kind of one thought in particular that I don't want to share it exactly because it'll give away kind of what happens, but there is one where Matthew is reflecting on how God has provided for them through it all, through everything they've been out. He brought this and brought this and brought this. And I just, I really liked that because like it showed that in the midst of everything, no matter what you're going through, God is there for you. And you might be able to see it in that particular instance, but when you reflect back and it's like, no, God brought that to happen. God brought that to happen. So yes. So that is book one. Now I get to move on to book two where obviously we have more horses and cowboys. And so all I know is that this one is going to feature Mark and Jonah. So I don't really know what their connection, like why the two of them are in this book. So I got to pick it up and find out. And then I will check back in once I read it. So hopefully, so today is Monday. And what else is on my agenda for today? 
So tonight I plan on repainting my nails because they're starting to get a little chipped again. And I was going to show you kind of my nail collection, like my nail polish collection, but I'm not going to do that right now because I'm kind of stuck for time to get this <laughs> to get this done, this clip filmed, because I also need to get my video ready to go up for tomorrow. So I got to create the thumb for nail for that. I've got to watch the edited video to make sure it's all okay. I'm going to paint my nails and I have to talk to my mother tonight because... We talk pretty much every Monday night is kind of our scheduled phone call. So I'm going to do my nails while I'm on the phone with her. That is the plan. So before that phone call, I need to get the video stuff done. So that is what I'm going to do right now. And then I may check in afterwards. We'll see. I will check in at some point. It is now Tuesday evening. And once again, Andrew's gone to bed so I can work on his birthday present because his birthday is tomorrow. So I have to get it done today. But so today after work, I, while he was at the dentist appointment, I rushed home from work, went into his closet, grabbed a couple of clothes that I'd already decided I was going to grab. And I've got them hidden. So then I'll grab them to wrap them tonight. But I was able to get that done before he came home from his appointment. So he doesn't know. I don't think he knows anyways. He hasn't made a comment that he's noticed anything missing and I highly doubt he'll notice. So then after that we had supper and stuff and then it's pouring rain pretty much all day and I was fighting a headache when I came home and I thought well I'm just hungry so I got something to eat. That didn't really help. So after supper I took a nap for about an hour. I don't know if that's really a nap <laughs> but and then I was reading. And so I have started The Heart's Charge by Karen Whitmire. You'll see that I'm 80 pages in, give or take. 90 pages in, so I'm on chapter 10. And I am really liking it. Immediately, just from the opening scene, I just, I don't know, it's really intrigued me. So we are following the two of the horse, two of the four horsemen. And there are two women they have met that I'm assuming are going to be the love interest. One of them is a love interest from the past for one of the characters. And the other one they've just met. But they, the two women work together and obviously the two men work together. So I'm really interested in this one. And the opening scene just had me hooked. Like... It just, it shocked me because I wasn't expecting Mark to be that type of character. And the way he acted in the situation he was in just like really intrigued me and kind of endeared him to me. So yeah, I'm really enjoying it so far, but I need to put it down because I need to get to wrapping. So this is the two wrapping papers that I'm working with. I love this wrapping paper. Like it's just, yeah. But because my plan, because of this wrapping paper, my plan for the numbers to number each package didn't work. So I had to come up with something else. So I think I figured that out. But once I get everything wrapped, then I will number them. And it doesn't matter for me, like what order they go in. I'm just going to randomly number them because it doesn't really matter. So that is what I'm going to work on now. And then once I have it kind of bundled, I will hopefully show you. I'm not quite sure exactly how the bundle's gonna come together. So I'm gonna work on that. So I still have a few more to wrap yet. <sighs> okay, you still can't see this. Wow, I've been doing this for way too long and I don't wanna wrap anything else for quite a while. So I've got it all wrapped, I've got it all labeled, so I put little numbers, can you see that, sort of, on each one. They're not in any order, just very random, and now I'm going to pull this bag up. So it's going to be like a kind of a big gift bag and now we wait for tomorrow and wow Ugh. 
I do not sit on the floor very often for, <laughs> for a reason. My legs can't handle it. And I've been sitting here for, oh my, oh my, like two and a half hours almost doing this. Maybe a little bit longer, maybe a little bit less because I have to get up and get the labels and get the, yeah. But I have this tie that came with this bag. This is just like a from the dollar store. So hopefully, I mean, I have a, I have the Rubbermaid container in the bottom, so it's kind of supporting the bottom, right? Yeah. Okay. So now that it's almost 11 o'clock, I'm going to finish this and then I'm going to read some more and then I will check in tomorrow. It is now Wednesday evening. August the 16th. It is Andrew's birthday today. So we went out for supper with friends and then they came over and Andrew opened his gift. So I will insert a clip of that with some stuff taken out. <laughs> um, but yeah, he really enjoyed it and kind of got a kick out of it. And you'll see that he didn't really clue in to the clothing thing until like I think the last item of clothing. So yeah, that was, it was kind of fun that way. Hmm. Oh, says one. One. But mm -hmm. well, the way I can get one. Okay. Let's see. Ooh, fancy that, eh? Columbia. Ooh. Ooh. Fancy schmancy. Cool. Yeah, it's just your style. <laughs> Kit Kat pops. No, I don't really remember. <laughs> Oh, usually says most of my deco stuff is for oh, Dakota workwear. Dakota. Yeah, it's for you. Uh, Where's that from? Where's that from? Mark's workwear. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you actually, you actually went there to get me one. There you go. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Honey cool and that. Oh, and yes. I can, I can win up to forty thousand dollars in a kitchen makeover. So oh, there you go. There you go. See. Yeah. I don't know if I do. But. Oh, okay. Oh, look, you got yeah. some jeans. from your closet and they what? still have the tags no on them and this is why i had to rush home yesterday <laughs> while you were your dentist don't tell them all your secrets <laughs> gummy bears or two charcoal toothbrushes never... a mini bike until we get the real one but anyways this will do for now so in regards to reading wise i have been able to read a bit i'm about halfway through not quite just under halfway through I'm on page 158 of 377, and I am really enjoying this. And I really like all four main characters. There's not a couple I'm rooting for over the other couple. I like both equally, and I'm definitely invested in these characters. So I am really enjoying this, so I am going to sit down and read for a bit before I go to bed now. So it's been a really good day and nice to be able to celebrate his birthday. So it is Thursday evening and today was just a normal day. Went to work, came home, made supper and read and read and read. And I finished The Heart's Charge by Karen Whitmire. I love this book. It is a dual romance and in it, I was cheering for both romances, which is usually I find one, like I'm, I'm kind of rooting for one more than the other. Not in this one. I was rooting for both relationships. I just, I loved both guys. I loved both girls. And there's a ton of characters in this one, ranging from kids to adults. And 
I enjoyed them all. And it was easy to distinguish who the different characters were and keep track of it. Like they were very unique in their own so I knew who was who. And there is um, talk of faith, like faith discussions between different characters, between the adults, between the adult and the child. And it just, it felt so natural the way it was done. I just, mm, I loved it. And this horse in particular plays a very particular role, but not like with his rider. Yeah, his rider. And with the female interests of this rider. And I just, I love the way it was added. I just, I really enjoyed this story. So, and the opening scene is like, what's going on? Like, what? And I mean, I knew what was going, like, I wasn't confused like I was with the opening battle scene in book number one. I knew what was going on, but it was like, wow, like what a situation to be put in and for it to be the opening scene. And then the story just kind of builds off of that scene and leads into the rest and how they meet the females and how, right? Like it just and kind of builds in there's a mystery going on and so the men are trying to figure out what's going on and I just I don't want to say too much because it is book two and I don't want to give away spoilers but I really really enjoyed it and s there are some scary moments that happen and that just had me like what's gonna happen are they okay? Like what? I, I couldn't turn the page fast enough to find out what was going to happen. Like I did not want to put it down because I needed to know. <laughs> the My only negative about this and only because I'm really fussy is that I really wish the other members of the Hangers Horsemen were, had played a bigger role in the story. They are included but not till the very end almost and their role is very minor and I just I miss seeing them because book number one it's really all the characters like the group of them together interacting throughout most of the book in this one it's really only two of them and then we see the other two a little bit later on so that's my only negative but I gave this book five stars because I really enjoyed it and I mean yeah I really hope that book three includes these characters more than this book included the characters from book one. <laughs> okay, now that I've finished this book, before I move on to starting book three, which is in honor's defense, I will share a couple quotes from you. And I was lucky that I had this book in physical and on my Kindle, so I could highlight, go to my Kindle and highlight, or I could read in bed at night. Book number three, I only have physically, so it's just going to be a little bit harder to read in bed at night, except for the fact that it is Thursday night, so really Saturday night, if I'm still reading it, I'll be able to read in bed, but that's if I'm still reading it Saturday night. You will know. <laughs> the first quote I'm going to share is, you can't control what people say, what they do, or how they think. All you can control is what you say, do, and think. Control the mind first, son, and the rest will follow. Pain and anger narrow our vision. Take a higher perspective. Even the vilest man is made in the image of God and loved by him. And then the next one is, But if each man and woman were defined solely by their greatest sin, what hope would there be for any of us? Okay, and then the last one. This is from the kind of the vow of the horseman and it's just repeated, but I had to highlight it because it, I couldn't remember the exact wording from book one. So I had to highlight it in this one. And it says, we took a vow against using lethal force and swore only to use our weapons to defend the innocent against injustice. So that's like kind of the motto of the horseman. So I, yeah, I really enjoyed this book. Okay, so before I start reading book number three, it's an exciting moment because book number two is one of the 23 books on my bingo board, 24 books on my bingo board, and I get to color it in now. 
so let's let's do that okay so let's color the book i just finished so we've got the spine for the eighth month and then it is a five star book so we'll color in the whole thing and now we get to turn the page and I just finished the heart's charge. Let's not judge my coloring skills <laughs> or process. relaxing and I like when I get to do it in the green <laughs> okay so I have two more books to finish for that line three for that one yeah this is looking oh just one for that one that's the only one yeah but I have completed one so far this year yeah it's it's possible right We'll see. I have finished In Honor's Defense by Karen Whitmire. I actually finished it Sunday night. I'm filming this Monday night um, because when I finished it last night, it was like, mm, I'm not filming right now. <laughs> so I don't think I filmed any clips. No, I did. I filmed, I think maybe one or two clips over the weekend between like between the time I started this book and when I finished it. So basically this weekend was an at home weekend, which was so nice to have because I don't feel like we've had that for a while. Not that Andrew really had an at home because he had to work on Saturday again, but I mean, we didn't have to go out Saturday night and Sunday and it was just, it was nice. So I spent the weekend I updated my blog, got everything up to date, all my reviews up to the middle of August are finally on there. I'd really been slacking on and not putting them up. And so I've got all that back up to date again. Thank you. That was a lot of work, but I'm so glad for it to be done. And now my goal is to try to keep it updated. And then I did spend some time reading outside on the deck, so I enjoyed the sun a bit. Made supper, obviously, and so I think I filmed a little few clips of that. I'm almost done. It is supper time. This is one of my favorite meals, little mini meatloafs. And then as I said, I finished this last night. So what did I think? I really enjoyed it. I love cowboys, western, historical set stories. I just, and on a ranch. I don't know, I just, I love them. And so, in this one, this one is book three of the series, and we follow Luke Davenport, who is the fourth horseman that we haven't got to know his story till this book. And so he has, he's kind of a single horseman now. I mean, they're not working as the group, right? So he has taken on a job in Texas to kind of round up some rustlers. And then at that ranch where he's been hired on, 
the next door neighbor is Maris and her nephew Nate. So Maris comes from St. Louis and she gets a letter in the mail saying from the lawyer saying her brother has passed away and has left her custody of her 14 year old nephew Nate. So Maris moves out to Texas because she doesn't want to kind of mess up Nate's life any more than is already being changed, right? So she moves out to Texas and she sees herself as kind of the invisible. She's the youngest of eight kids and she's been looking after her great aunt and she, nobody really takes her seriously and kind of everybody forgets about her is how she feels. She moves to Texas and tries to take on custody of Nate. Nate is 14 years old and has just lost his father and he lost his mother years prior and so he is a difficult youngster to deal with and pulling a lot of pranks and stuff on Maris. Demarius is her real name but he calls her Aunt Maris. And so we are following that and then the scene where Luke and Demarius initially meet had me laughing so hard like it's such a a meat scene I just I really enjoyed it and so then the story is filled with intrigue mystery suspense and relationships and faith and leaning on God and helping him get you through and so we're watching kind of the relationship between Nate and Demarius grow and can Demarius help him Kind of move through his grief and deal with it and he's got a lot of anger with that grief because was his father's death accidental or was it murder and so they're kind of like nate is positive it was murder and he thinks he knows who did it but the obviously the sheriff said no it's accidental like right and so they're trying to figure that out and luke gets involved in that and i just the way that Luke kind of took Nate under his wing and kind of tried to mentor him and show him kind of how to become a man. I just, I really enjoyed that. And Luke is kind of, has always felt like the wild one and due to his upbringing, doesn't feel like he's worthy of a family and stuff. And he starts seeing Nate as like kind of because Demarius is praising him for the way he treats Nate and being a figure to Nate and Luke's like I don't know I shouldn't be no like I'm not I'm I'm meant to roam and be and I just I really enjoyed watching these characters grow and we see Demarius grow from kind of like a timid person in the background to standing up for what she believes and fighting back and she just she grows so much from the beginning of the story to the end of the story and we also watch kind of Nate become turn from this kind of really angry young man and he matures throughout the course of the story I just really enjoyed it and my complaint in book two was we didn't see enough of the horsemen together Somewhat that is still my complaint in book three. However, they do play a bigger role in this book. They are involved than they did in book two. Not as much as they were involved in book one, but they're still really involved. And the ending leaves a really nice wrap up for all the horsemen characters and kind of what the future holds for them. So I really enjoyed this book. I gave it five stars. My favorite book of the series though is still The Heart's Charge because I just, I absolutely loved the, all these characters in this one. I really enjoyed it, but this was the one that kind of holds my heart of the series. So yeah, so that is my read through the three book series, which I don't have the third book, which is technically book one that I don't have, um, of Hanger's Horseman by Karen Whitmire.
this is set in the late 1800s in Texas and if you enjoy cowboys, horses, just Texas, Western in the 1800s, 1900s, pick up this series and give it a try. So I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video today and I would love it if you would like and subscribe to my channel and let's chat in the comments below. Have a good day. Bye.